This is the Bowers & Wilkins 606 S3. It's the first B&W speaker I've ever had in my house. This review almost didn't happen. I almost sent these speakers back. Why? Well, stick with me. We'll find out together. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the B&W 606 S3. These speakers come in at $1,100 a pair. If you want the smaller version, I think that's right at $900, a little bit less than $1,000. So these are not inexpensive speakers. And this is Bauer and Wilkins, Bowers and Wilkins, Bowers and Wilkins entry level speaker. These come with a one inch decoupled double dome titanium tweeter, a six and a half inch con contenum. Contenum, it's trademarked. Contenum Cone FST mid-range bass driver. Fixed suspension transducer. Has a port on the back. Bass reflux cabinet with rear firing flow port. Also trademarked. Stated frequency response 52 hertz all the way up to 28,000 hertz. Plus or minus 3 dB. Sensitivity 88 dB. 8 ohms nominal impedance. Although I think it does drop down to right around 4 ohms. 3.7 ohms. So what's new for this one? Titanium tweeter. It went from aluminum to titanium. They weigh about 15 pounds a piece. They're 7.5 inches wide. 13 and 11 sixteenths inches high and 12 and 15, why don't they just say 13 inches deep? You can buy amp or buy wire these on the back, but there's little jumpers. I did not do that. I just hooked them up. But if you want to, the option is there. And these come in three different colors. You can get black, you can get white, or you can get white baffle with something like a, I don't know, oak surround. So let's talk about why I almost sent these back. Okay, why did I almost send these back? Because I thought they sounded horrible. Truly abysmal. Screaming top end. No mid-range to speak of. Booming, bloated bass. However, that was through AirPlay. And when I stopped using AirPlay, incredibly different. Like I was listening to a different speaker through a different system with a different source. It was actually pretty amazing. So when I go through the bass, mid-range, treble, and the final thoughts, this is not streaming through AirPlay. I was streaming directly through a Weem Pro, I believe, going into a Gishelli Labs J2 DAC, the 4499 version, with a Sparkos op amp upgrade into the RMC1L surround sound processor from Emotiva, into an Emotiva XPA Gen 3 multi-channel amplifier, but I'm running mono modules on the front left and right speaker, was also running it in reference stereo, so no subwoofer, no EQ, flat, flat, flat. So I had some time and my stepson and I were listening to these and he has a very different musical taste from mine and I was letting him drive the ship so he was airplaying into the Weem. We listened to Long Cool Woman by the Hollies, Subwoofer Lullaby, C4, C418, I don't know if that's the artist, Caravan by Van Morrison and Mayonnaise by the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, they all sounded terrible. Sounded like a really bad Bluetooth speaker and I kept thinking to myself, this can't be right. Do it, and I, I checked. I went behind the speaker and made sure that I didn't have the polarity messed up. I checked the RMC1L, making sure that I didn't have it in some weird mode. I checked the Weem to make sure I didn't have some weird EQ going, and I had none of those. So I was not optimistic about the Bowers and Wilkins 606 S3s. And I thought to myself, how am I gonna do this review? I can't do this review. There is no way that I can do this review without 
just dumping all over these speakers. But then I thought, you know what? I didn't really give these a fair shake. I didn't listen to them as long as I usually do for music. I've been listening to them for movies and TV for a couple of weeks now. So I sat back down and streamed directly from the Weem into the J2 and then into the RMC1L. And things got a lot different. Let's talk about soundstage and imaging. More human than human by, I think, is that White Zombie? Yeah, I think it's White Zombie. Anyway, at the beginning of that song, there's like a little, I don't know, electronic, goes from speaker to speaker. It's really good. And the B&Ws did a really good job. Center imaging was great. And that was with these barely towed in at all. So the off axis performance of this speaker is pretty solid from an imaging standpoint. But the kids and I were watching Haunted Mansion, the Disney movie, the Eddie Murphy version, not the newer one. We've actually watched the newer one. It's okay. But the Eddie Murphy one, very good. Just listening to the B&W, so no center channel or anything. And they were throwing things around the room. It was really quite something. And I love it when a speaker makes me go check to A, see if the center speaker is on, B, to see if the surrounds are on, or or like the height channels are on. None of them are on. So they do a great job of throwing a lateral soundstage. Also do a great job of forward to aft imaging. Now, I, in my opinion, have the best DAC under $1,000 on here, especially when it comes to soundstage and imaging and the J2 with the Sparkles op amp upgrade. The takeaway for me is if you give the B&Ws a really good recording, they are going to render things in space exceptionally well. Let's talk about bass. Harvester of Sorrow, 24 second mark. There's a basically a drum solo and it was so palpable, so powerful. Again, I had to go check and see if the subwoofer was on. It was not. I was really, really surprised at just how much bass came out of these. And usually when you have this much bass coming out of a speaker of this size, you're sacrificing a whole bunch of mid-range clarity. We'll get to that in a little bit, but the good news is they did not. I feel like these are really focused in the really meaty, beefy part, like 80 to 100 hertz or something. But they also had pretty good extension too, and Intergalactic had decent extension. And you gotta keep in mind too, these speakers have a rated low frequency roll off of 52 hertz, which is not very low. That's like the same rating as the Sony SSCS5s. And let me tell you something, you put the Sonys against the B&Ws as far as bass presence and punch, it's no contest. So you cannot tell how a speaker is going to sound, especially on the bottom end, by just looking at the low frequency roll off. So what, Miles Davis, this is when I wanted to see, okay, is this just boosted bass or is there detail in here? With the stand up bass, it almost felt bloated, but the 28 second mark is when Basically, it's just the bass solo. Very well defined, very believable, and very powerful. <laughs> clean, very clean. For me, these are like pushing the limit of sounding bloated. On certain tracks, I thought there's no way this thing's going to be able to resolve bass cleanly. But it's like they push the limit. My name is Mud by Primus. If you haven't listened to that song, listen to that song because it goes really low. Les Claypool's playing the bass, obviously he's a very good bass player. Most bookshelf speakers can't hang with that song in the first 10 seconds. B&W's did about as good of a job as a bookshelf speaker ever has, in my opinion. Let's talk about mid-range. Going back to So What by Miles Davis, trumpets were very good, but at the two minute, 26 second mark, they come really forward. It's basically the point in the song where the trumpet goes as high in the range as it's going to go. And that was at 1300 Hertz. I was looking at it through a real time analyzer. It's pretty cool. If you ever have a question about your music, you can download a free RTI real time analyzer and see what instruments are at what frequencies. And if anything ever sounds out of place, you can just listen to your song, open up the app and see where it's at in the frequency range. 1300 Hertz is where that trumpet ended up. Little bit eh, in your face. Lazaretto by Jack White. Not Jack Black, Jack White. At 6K, the cymbals, little bit spicy. And that's where the speaker started to struggle was resolving a lot of cymbal hits all in a row. It just became sizzly. It just couldn't separate the different cymbal crashes out. It was just shh, 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 very brief. Anyway, I don't even know why we're talking about this because that's in the treble. 
the guitar solo at one minute 30 second mark was pretty intense and that was around 2800k so for me there's a ford lean mid-range 1300 all the way up to about 3000 hertz and johnny cash hurts acoustic guitars were plucky and excellent his voice was a little bit less focused on the baritone and a little bit cool through the mid-range which tells me again that upper mid-range point there's a little bit of a forward lean let's talk about treble uninvited Alanis Morissette the studio recording about the 17 second mark there was a little bit of sibilance now, the one that has a lot of sibilance is the MTV Unplugged recording. The piano came in at 888 hertz, and the sibilance was around 6K. So again, Lazaretto had a little bit of oomph at the 6K point with Alanis Morissette. Sibilant, a little bit boosted. Not terrible, but it's there. The piano wasn't at all distracting, though. It is actually pretty cool to hear that part so crystal clear and so in the room santa monica by everclear the re-recorded version that, that song's an awesome song the initial guitar was really incredible if you haven't heard that song go listen to santa monica by everclear the original is pretty good but the re-recorded one's a lot better i have clean clear plucky and about the one minute mark there's a bunch of cymbal crashes and they kind of just all melded together kind of sounded like hiss 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 now, Sinner Man with the hi-hat was not as believable or tonally accurate as I've heard on other speakers, especially soft dome speakers, if the soft dome tweeter is integrated really, really well. But with a titanium or an aluminum dome tweeter, a lot of times you get really good percussion, especially metal percussion, which makes sense. You have a titanium dome tweeter, you have an aluminum dome tweeter, cymbals are made out of metal. So while a hi-hat wasn't the most tonally accurate out there, it was really entertaining and fun. What are my final thoughts? These BMWs need not only a quality recording, but quality equipment feeding them. If you don't give them that, they don't sound good. John Darko just did a really good video about AirPlay and about AirPlay 2 devices. And actually, ironically, you get lower quality when streaming from an AirPlay 2 device to another AirPlay 2 device than you do streaming to an AirPlay 1 device. And I definitely heard that. This sounded to me like really bad Bluetooth. So if you're gonna get these speakers, make sure you are feeding them with a high quality source. Most of my listening was done at 75 dB and below. And these speakers, I think, really shine at reasonable volumes. But when you crank it up, if you have very good equipment on it and you have a good recording, they sound really, really good. I thought they were going to be fatiguing. There was a little bit of fatigue when I listened at 80 dB and above, but that's really loud. So coming back full circle, I replayed Mayonnaise by the Smashing Pumpkins when I was going through the J2 streaming directly from the Weem. And I've got some time with this song because, well, the 90s was like a different speaker was like a different speaker on a different system in a different room. That's how much the source material affects these speakers. 606S3, very dynamic bass, way more powerful than it has any right to be. So there's probably a bit of a V curve in here. Reminds me a bit of the RP600 from Klipsch, the first generation, but better bass and not as piercing upper mid range. Sounds like a more refined RP600M. And if you only have two speakers and a subwoofer, this will actually make a really good soundbar replacement because this thing does soundstage and image really, really well. And obviously vocals are gonna be pretty clean and clear, intelligible. I think the only thing that speaker doesn't do exceptionally well is cymbal separation. Things just start to get jumbled up up there when there's a lot of information. Initial attack though on percussion, really good. At $1,100, I think the build quality is not quite there, especially on the finishing of the enclosure. There's a lot of other speakers out there for less money that have real wood veneer like the Wharfdale Denton 80th edition, even the 85th edition comes in cheaper than these. Heck, you can spend a little bit more and get the Lintons, but you're not gonna get the same sound signature for sure. So comparing these to the P300 from Bucard, very different sounding speaker. The B&Ws 
more exciting, more lively speaker. P300 I think is a little bit better on the bottom end, but if you're just out for a good time, the BMWs are excellent. I wish like the Klipsch RP600M, the Kef LS50, I wish it sounded like this. So the 606 S3, I think is a better version of the RP600M and the LS50. But the 606 S3, for me, from memory, sounds like the LS50 with bass. All right, apparently I forgot to uh, finish this video yesterday, so I'm recording this as I edit it at the end of my edit. These aren't gonna be for everybody. These can be a little bit fatiguing and they're gonna be very choosy and picky about the electronics that you put on them and the recording. However, if you get it right, the BMW 606 S3 is a very engaging, fun, dynamic, detailed speaker that's gonna give you a different experience than most speakers will give you. If you're super sensitive in the upper mid-range, might not be the speaker for you. If you like to listen at 90 dB or 85 dB and up, this might not be the speaker for you. Amp pairings, a warmer amp, something like a Marantz is gonna sound really good on these. I would avoid anything that has a thin bottom end. I don't think the Class D NAD stuff would do well on the BMW 606 S3. Price is gonna be up to you, $1,100. There's a lot of other speakers out there, but those speakers aren't gonna sound like the BMW. They This speaker really kind of sits in a class by itself when it comes to Sonics. Similar to the LS50, similar to the RP600M from Klipsch, but a little bit different. And I think it handles things a little bit better than both of those speakers because it's got bass, which the LS50 doesn't have, and it's got controlled bass that the RP600 doesn't have. So if you wanna support the channel, you can subscribe and like this video. You can buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. Sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. We use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links. But don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless you're doing it through your new BMW 606 S3 on a really good amp with a really good recording. Binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.